to him. Her smile could cure any male reproductive dysfunction. The function of her beauty was an unction to make the tires of your sprint lose traction and crash into the resolve of her erotica. She walked up to me with pools of lust dripping from the fabric of her skin. Pleasure tattooed in her walk, she inhaled every sexual fantasy buried in my subconscious. I could smell desire off her lips. And in the sweetest, and in the sweetest of voices, she said, hello. And I was like, what? <laughs> I looked at her with a blade of judgment in my eyes, slit the throat of her self-esteem when I said, get behind me, you hoe. <laughs> she sighed held the awkward silence in between us like a mother holding her child for the first time and she said, look it in my eyes. Mm. And when I did, I saw a little girl with mismatched teeth, a ponytail, and a smile that says, I will be happy whatever the situation. She lay in the comfort of her bed with, with posters of Disney Channel characters plastered all across her wall and her arms around her favorite doll named Sandy. Then in the cool of the night, a man wearing the identity of her father stepped in. He had premeditated sin on his hands and bludgeoned eyes caused by staring at caused by staring at the violence perpetuated by misogynist pornography. He stepped he stepped up to her, pulled her by the hair high on sick fantasy. He was like, baby, are you ready for me? And with the innocence, with the innocence of the moon on days of darkness, she was like, Daddy, what are you doing? And he was like, I would rather show you. <laughs> so, on that night, her zippers were undone and pants fell to the floor, and injustice screamed through the hallways of silence. She was never the same again. A heritage of incest was passed on. She thought her body was a lamb sacrificed to the altar of lust, jumping from one promiscuous relationship to the next, hoping to find salvation in the arms of a man. She cut herself with the blades of guilt each night, drowned in an ocean of her own tears, suffocated in the gas chambers of moral judgment. She looked at me and said, Look, I am thirsty. <laughs> Would you please give me a glass of love? She, she looked at me and said, Look, I am hungry, would you please? Please, give me a plate of hope. So I, I grabbed her by the arm, and together we walked into a shop named Grace. Jesus was at the counter. He gave us a smile that could resurrect the dead and stretch out their hand that could feed 5,000. And, and he looked at her and asked, May I take your order, madam? At the corner of her eye, she saw, she saw a wedding ring of salvation and there was a diamond of righteousness on it. She said, I would like that, but I can never, I can never afford the price tag. And Jesus, Jesus looked at her square in the eye and he was like, it's absolutely free. All you have to do is believe that I proposed hanging on a tree. Oh. She looked at him, she looked at him teary-eyed, and she was like, you're the first person that has ever, ever looked me in the eye and seen anything of worth. I believe you. I believe you, Jesus. Thank you.
fries. And I'm gonna go to the next two points. Right. All right, all right, all right. We're gonna have a Ludo Middleman. Ludo, 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 Ludo. Best friends.